G'day guys, welcome to another podcast edition of the Profitable Practice Podcast. Uh, I'm Jason Pilgrim, CEO of the Profitable Practice and uh, founder of the Global Kaizen Group. And uh, today was a bit of a little ad hoc session that's just come up out of absolute nowhere, but it was really powerful. I've grabbed the out the uh, video equipment and we're doing it as a video blog and uh, and also a or video podcast and a podcast. Uh, and I'm here with... Uh, Tobias Atkins, but he's Toby Atkins from Atkins Health, uh, up here on the Gold Coast and up in Brisbane. And um, some really, really powerful stuff that we've done with the team this morning. Some really amazing things happening. And uh, I thought it would be fantastic to share with all of you guys right now. So. Uh, they can't be seen, so it doesn't matter, right? Um, but mate, we're going to just dive straight in. Thanks for just ad hoc, out of nowhere, jumping in onto this. Um, we were just having some a really good chat for two or three minutes, just sort of wrapping up to the chat we were having with some team members this morning in that bit of a team day. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've got more stuff happening this afternoon. Absolutely. And I thought it was really powerful because what we've been able to do with yourself and the lessons that you've you've learned and come through, I think, is something that a lot of allied health providers uh, get stuck with, a challenge with, and a lot of them don't even actually really know it or understand it so mm-hmm. i just thought let's let's go through and step these out but actually step this out for everyone's benefit so cool um mate do you want to just give us a really quick rundown 20 seconds on the structure of your business mm-hmm. uh set up locations team members yeah cool so um currently we've got about uh, 11 team members yep. a mixture of um, some that have full-time caseload others doing a little bit of contractual work here there and everywhere uh, got five locations on the Gold Coast, um, moving into Brisbane as well. Um, that's pretty much it in terms of the structural component of it. Cool. Um, does that cover what you're chasing? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Just to give some framework for those yeah, who don't good. know who you guys are. Cool. Um, so we got chatting a few minutes ago, just before we hit record. We got one of the big realizations of this morning was obviously in and around about simplifying your business and creating an avenue where we actually dumping locations and have dumped locations in order to be able to grow what you guys are actually wanting to achieve. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just talk us through that? Yeah, cool. So um, we're having a bit of a chat of like a company blueprint and and, and kind of structure and um, talking about where to go from here and how to grow and, and, and what things we're doing well and things that we're not doing well and time spent in different areas and locations and all the rest of it. And um, basically came to the realization that a lot of time, energy and um, effort has been spent in areas that um, in the past particularly that w- w- probably took our focus away from our vision and, and distractions dude let's 100%. call it, for, let's yeah, call yeah. it for what it is right 100%. Um, we're, we're all here for with friends so just to what, what we discovered at mm-hmm. the end of the day was the fact that um, there was a period of time there and we've tidied this up but we're about to do it again as mm-hmm. well that We've got four, we had four locations. We knew that we had to take one out of the equation. We didn't know, but we, we did end up doing that so that we could open up into five that we have now. And I think the reason why this is really powerful, because I know there's a lot of people that are listening and, and potentially watching as well, that are in that situation. They're spread between three locations, two locations, four locations, you know, two half days here, three full days there, and one day a week somewhere else. And they're running around like a blue ass fly they're trying to uh, you know, grow and they get told they've got to grow their vision and that what's their vision and what do they stand for, why do they get out of bed and follow your vision, you'll you know, love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life and all of this, let's be, that's bullshit most of the time. Right? Mm-hmm. Not that it's not true, but it's that, it's the motivation of bullshit that everyone hears, right? And so I sort of sat down with you and said, right, let's have a bit of a look at it. And what we soon realized was the fact that we needed to actually dump one of those locations originally. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, taking up sixty percent of our time and making like eight percent of our money. So mm-hmm. it's one of those situations. Get rid of. We've got five, but we're going to be doing that again. Um, talk us through it. At the moment, we've got our two large centers. Mm, mm. And what are we? What are we doing? Yeah, cool. So, um, give you a little bit of background. So uh, essentially, 
the vision is influence. Um, we want to grow, expand, and um, increase our influence and um, create benchmarks and do a lot of wonderful things, right? And yep. originally... Um, and like, if you talk about it openly and honestly and yeah. as well, you want to actually know that in several years' time you're actually influencing the decision on making policies of government, etc. Um, which, you know, it's hard because you're only just starting to encapsulate that with the team and we got some more grounding on that this morning. Absolutely. Um, which is really exciting for you guys moving forward. So mm. I thought I'd interject there because <laughs> it's, it's hard for you guys to verbalise that into a podcast situation, but I'm happy to tell everyone what it is. Appreciate that. Um, and these Put guys are do some like really, it. really cool things. Well, at the end of the day, you know, like you, got, you know that, you know, I want to influence the lives of 20 million people by right. the year 2025. That's kind of scary, but the more you say it, the more you know you have to do it. Really becomes. And, and mm. it doesn't become that scary when you actually start to realise that that's who you are and what you want to do. So mm. you guys are in the same situation. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, so basically uh, keeping that in, in the back of my mind, um, especially in the early days, I was like, right, well, we need to be in more places. Yeah. Um, to influence more people and, and create that influence on a policy procedural kind of area, which in all honesty, I, I, I didn't have that grounding until probably this morning either. I knew what, that I wanted to talk to certain people and change certain things, but to have that clarity has also been really, really powerful. Yep. Um, so yeah, I, I kind, of, kind of long story short. I, I well, thought, I'm going to jump in there for a sec, because one thing that you did say there was really, really powerful. You felt that you had to be in more locations. You had to be it's everywhere. Jump back on that. Yeah. Because and that's and like we see this all the time in allied health. It's like I'm here and I'm here and I'm here, but I want to help more people and change more lives. And one of your main team members this morning, and and won't have to use names, but mm. she turned around and she said, "I got into this industry because I want to help people." Mm. And you know what? Ninety percent of us did. That's that's what we we did. And our mentality is work harder, work harder, do more, do more, do more, go there, try these to, and just run around like a blue eyes fly. Mm. And you do all that to change these lives and to have that impact and influence. But then you realize your own life sucks. Mm. Not, not being disrespectful. No, no, no. But I'm most of the time, it. like, you know, I, I nearly died with a young person stroked or 90 hours a week and that type of stuff years ago. That was my wake up call. Some people aren't that lucky. But when people start out in allied health, they're working 50, 60, 70 hour work weeks to mm. make ends meet in all these places, traveling too much, etc. Mm. And you guys had that wake up call, yeah? Absolutely. And I mean, it's funny to take that to a practitioner level. We have these conversations with our team members as well. And most of the time, if not their, their first goal, one of their first goals is to create a full time caseload. You heard that yeah, even this morning. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and you ask them what that looks like, and they're like, you know, 40 hours a week, 60 plus clients, and you're like, holy dilly, okay, so that's what we all want to do, we just want to work hard, and, and yep. yeah, again, like you said... It's the early marker points, isn't right? it? It's like, get a full-time caseload, or they start off part-time, or mm. as a contractor, and it's like, I want to do this, I want to change, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, and so then, to take that into a young business kind of mindset, you, you have that that vision as a practitioner and you take it to a young business mindset and so you think all right well i've got a full-time caseload now i just need more locations and more people to basically enhance those full-time caseloads to multiple full caseloads and yeah. and yeah so to sort of cut back to the original question you asked me it was to see that to get to the vision that we have in terms of creating change in in, in the level of policies and procedures it's that's not necessarily the case and mm -hmm. and you waste a lot of time and energy trying to make five locations as good as your original or as good as each other and and, and you spend more time on the ones that are struggling and less time to the ones yep. that are doing well um it's the 80 20 rule isn't it proto principle for anyone who doesn't know the proto principle i'm not going to go into it now but look it up yeah look it's, it's really really simple some great books on it as well but you were really in that situation. You eighty percent of your time was invested into, or well, not invested because it wasn't smart. It was spent. Eighty percent mm. of your time was being spent in what was delivering less, well under twenty percent. It was like a ninety ten rule, wasn't yeah, it? So, yeah, straight up. Um, so dumb move for, mm. for the business side, but it normally takes someone on the outside to come in and say, "Hey, what about this?" And you go, mm. huh, "Yeah, so right." Yeah. So from now, you know, the the, the mindset has um, certainly changed. I mean. Kind of came up with that in in a grey kind of uh, I'd say grey because it wasn't black and white. Um, and I started spending less time in some places that were struggling a little bit. Yeah. Um, a little time ago, but I still you know, holding on. You know what I mean? Still yep. holding on. Still spending a little bit of time. And and so and, what's the damage? Because cool. I'm going to use that because it's a pretty powerful world. But mm. what's the damage 
that you know you're doing to your business. You're, like, you're stunting your business growth mm. by just letting it go forward. And I made the reference today about petrol money. Mm. Mm. It's like, oh, but Jase, you know, I don't do anything at this centre. Like, nothing at all. And I'm like, nothing, 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 nothing. Zero. Doing zero at mm. this centre. And it turns me a couple hundred dollars profit a month. Mm. Net profit. And I'm like, great, so it pays for your fuel. Yeah. All right? Depending on your car, maybe for a week, maybe <laughs> for a, mu- a month. Mm. People's mentality is, oh, it's a good thing, it's easy. I'm not doing anything, and it's bringing me a couple hundred dollars. I might as well keep it going. But what's the damage that you've realized taking that mentality has done to stunting your growth moving forward? Mm. So, it's, it's, I suppose the biggest thing is, like I say, that I, I don't spend any time there. Um, but once, once we kind of looked at um, the company in a different light and started looking at the tasks that need to be done in order for the company to, to progress forward, realized that although it isn't taking my time, it's taking the company's time. And when yep. I say that, I mean the other team members' time Absolutely, to yeah. keep that place afloat. Where those, nothing takes zero time. No, that's right. Otherwise, it wouldn't exist. Mm. Um, which is funny even saying that. Um, and, uh, yeah, right? Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I suppose at the end of the day, um, I think we need to look at a company for what it's worth and, and, and look at it as a company and not just your time as, as, yeah. the, as the leader or the owner or whatever you want to call yourself. You look at the people within it and, and at the end of the day, if, if they're spending time there, you are too. Absolutely. Um, and therefore... Yeah you're not spending time on getting closer and working harder at yep. your vision, which is... And chatting with the guys, direction. it's interesting that you say that because chatting with the guys this morning, um, we realised that the biggest realisation was that we need and the business needs more of their time invested into the two or three channels that are really going to drive forward, into the new stuff happening in Brisbane, mm. the new locations, and more time, funnily enough, more time of mm. their time is invested, needs to be invested there. But that then comes back to the old problem that you just flagged is the fact that they don't have time because they're busy. Mm. So although they're uh, busy running everything and doing it at this other centre that's giving you petrol money each month, it's a very quick realisation for yourselves that it's actually a self-limiting challenge. Mm. You don't have the scope to grow as a business moving forward with the right people doing the right avenues and focusing in the right areas when they're left just covering bases mm. at the other location down the road. 100%. And so what I see all the time is I see um, exactly what we've been through with yourself. We see a lot of businesses in saying, we need more team. We need another team member to work in a new location. To be able to invest that time, we need to bring someone else on. But the first thing that you do to a business when you bring someone on is pull back on what? Um, what do you mean? Sorry. Profit. Yeah, okay, I'll get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like straight away, you've yeah, got to pay someone. You've got, you've got more expenses, right? Training so, expenses. Yes, yeah, you've got mentoring programs. Yeah, absolutely. You start, yeah mm-hmm. absolutely. So all of a sudden, you start to hamper your profit. You start to pull back on you know, net net profit and cash flow and stuff like that. So you've got to open up those channels and look at that. But the best way forward in this scenario is what we took you guys through with this morning is why don't we actually, you know, in the business world, allied health is just one part of the business world. Absolutely. There's a saying we always have of you either feed it or kill it. Mm. And we had to have that harsh reality this morning where everyone's decided we've had, we've got to kill this thing, mm. you know. Um, get rid of it, leave it, put someone else in there, etc. give it to a colleague, whatever it happens to be, we're gonna kill it. Because the reality is, whilst you're there, you're getting your petrol money for little invested time. But that little invested time, if you invested that into the right ways moving forward, the net result could be five or 10 time multiple without even trying. Mm. And if that's in line with the vision of the team and where you guys are going and what you want in regards to advocacy and in regards to you know policy development, etc., then what you're actually doing is not only hampering the cash flow opportunities and the growth factorial by five or 10, but you're actually distinctly damaging your ability to even go close to what you want to obtain in five years or 10 years time. Mm. And I think for most people, that's worse than not having the extra money in the bank. Absolutely. Well, it smacks you in the face. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like... You'd realise that at the beginning yeah. of the movement. That's the tough part. 
maybe for one month or two months you don't have that extra petrol money. Mm. But when you do it the right way, and this I think is a really big situation, I think a lot of people don't understand it for what it is. Mm -hmm. If you push something hard for four to six weeks, you can literally be in a scenario where you'll never have a negative downturn on it. What I mean by that is people say, oh, I've got a a part-time team member, or I need to bring on a part-time, or I don't have enough for a full-time load. Mm -hmm. And you've seen me do deep dives with people on our webinars and that type of stuff, showing the formula or how we actually do it. And it's a really simple process. You can push this for four weeks, sometimes six weeks, and you can bring on a full-time team member, not a part-time team member. And you actually never lose a dollar because you've already broken even. So you've also dropped your own case load 10 or 15 you know, we did it with John, and that was like 22 hours we dropped. Crazy. You, you literally drop a part-time load, give it to a new team member. You can then go through and invest more time into them, into your team and your culture and your mentoring, mm. upskill them, and you can work in your genius. You can get through the marketing and start to move into the area that your business actually wants to go in. Mm. Like it's a no-brainer, right? When you look at it. When you look at it. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. just that we all take the hard, long road of you know, years of hard slog before someone actually hits us between the eyes with it. So, Absolutely. Yeah, that's no, cool. It is absolutely, it's absolutely really powerful. All right, dude. What I'll do? Let's um. Well, let's look to wrap this up because um, Toby's been a really cool guy to be able to just talk off the cuff with this, um, <laughs> pretty chilled out, and he's probably going to want to get back to his beer that's getting a bit warm, <laughs> um, that's not actually here, right? Uh, let me let me throw you <laughs> throw you under the bus here. Um, for those who are listening, what would be your what would be your key points, key takeaways? Um, biggest learnings, gold nuggets, all that type of stuff for someone that's in your situation. And let's be honest, there's a load of people that are in that situation. Multiple clinics, you know, a couple of team members, uh, not necessarily 11 like yourself, but maybe just one or two team members, a couple of locations, bits and pieces all over the place, um, wanting to grow, your learnings, biggest nuggets, et cetera. Yeah, sweet. So uh, first ever, I think, would be um, to, to become really intimate, essentially, with your vision. So mm-hmm. I, th- I thought I had it down pat um, yeah. and realized this morning that it wasn't as clear-cut and specific as I needed to be. Yeah. Um, once that was, um, well, once you got that sorted, uh, I suppose the next thing would be having a look at, yeah, like the 80-20 rule that we spoke about a little bit earlier um, and making sure that um, that 20% of our time is spent on the 80% of um, uh, revenue, revenue generating, revenue generating yeah, yeah. And, and, and the stuff that follows in, in the direction of your vision because that's yeah. what you'll find it, it is happening. So yeah. usually things we're passionate about are the things that do well, are the things that bring in the most amount of revenue and actually do align themselves with your vision. So um, kind of assessing that and looking at the data and, um, and then basically realizing that um, the stuff that is taking up 80% of your time but only generating the 20% of um, revenue or, or, or uh, progression towards... Petrol money for you, right? Petrol yeah, money, petrol right? Money, yeah, yeah. We'll stick with the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah, you're going to love the <laughs> <laughs> um, Is that it's taking up a lot more than what you think it is. Yeah. Um, whether it be your time or a team member's time. Um, and it's a self-limiting... That's right. So isn't it? yeah, hundred percent. And and because of that, and because it is taking only giving you back that twenty percent, realizing that if you restructure and take that, maybe cut that off, kill it, not maybe, feed, not try right. and feed it. Yeah, <laughs> straight up. Um, and put that in with that that time, whether whether it be yourself or or a team members, energy, effort, whatever you want to call it. And, and put it in with um, with the other eighty percent that is moving you in the right direction, um, the the generation um, of progression or revenue, whatever whatever it may be, will actually be outrageous amounts more profitable um, in in moving you in the right direction. So um, to kind of wrap up all those twenties and numbers and all that kind of stuff is basically yeah, they all add up to one hundred, mate. Yeah, straight up, straight up, straight yeah. up. Yeah. Cut, away, cut away essentially the bullshit. Um, yeah. Have a look at um, the stuff that is taking up way too much time. Relocate that energy um, yeah. or, or, or time and, and make sure it's it's working in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. And for for you guys in particular, I think mm. a simple way of, of of putting it is just you know what, whilst you're making two hundred dollars, you know. Hundred dollars a week, two hundred dollars a week, two hundred dollars a fortnight, whatever mm. it is. The petrol money scenario. While ever you're doing that, the time that is being spent to make a couple of hundred dollars, mm. that same time invest into the right channels and the right growth pathway of where you guys are going, 
would actually, in fact, return five, eight, ten, twelve time multiple right. of time and money. Absolutely. And if that means that you go backwards for four to six weeks and you don't have that two or three hundred dollars or whatever for two or four weeks or something like that, I mean, heck, that's you, you're going to make that back sixfold in the next month or the month after type of thing. So um, a little bit short term, you know, find your petrol money from the other sources mm. isn't that hard, right? Absolutely. And that can be a massive, massive win for so many people in our industry. And it's something you guys have seen. It's something I work with a lot of clients on. Mm. Uh, and, dude, I can't wait to see where it, where it now goes in the second phase because we know it worked the first time around. We know it's going to go nuts this time around and what you guys are going to be able to do, it's going to be really cool. So 100%. it's going to be uh, it's going to be awesome. And just, yeah, changing lives and that type of stuff in the way that it will is just going to be really be really special to be a part of and, and, and watching that too dude so yeah, it, absolutely so mate um let's um let's pull the pin on the podcast sweet um and dude seriously thank you very much because it's been a really this podcast has actually been a really sort of laid back one it's been uh, sure. literally chilling here we've got to be we, it was just <laughs> off the cuff i went hey if we're going to be talking about this why don't we at least cut the podcast because there's some great learnings here for, for all of you guys um and you know to, to learn and understand and even if you're not in that exact scenario at the moment there's so many good learnings that we've been through in this or that will come up that you need to think about that as well. So, um, dude, thanks for your time, and um, let's go and smash it out from here. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, pleasure. Even, See you though, well. even though people can't see that on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. Nice. Uh, thanks for joining us for another episode of the, Pro- the Profitable Practice Podcast. Uh, we'll talk to you guys very soon. Ciao for now. Cheers. Hey, guys. Thank you very much for listening to another episode of the Profitable Practice Podcast. I would love nothing more than for you to be able to leave a review. I get so much joy out of listening and reading the amazing things that you guys say about this. So please subscribe to our channel, leave a review and share it with your friends. Let's get some more fantastic information out there so all of us can grow the industry together. Cheers for now.